Welcome back, part three in our mini series looking at the Axminster AC260B bandsaw. Today we're going to put it through its paces, look at the features, and see what we think. That sounds good. Stick around. Okay, in part one of the series, we unboxed this beast to see what we had and we compared it to the others in the family. In part two, we set this thing up and we calibrated it and, and got a pretty accurate cut first time out of the box. Today, I want to put it through its paces. Now, obviously, bandsaws are only good as a blade that you put on them and you saw us put a new blade on this when we set this thing up. But if it's not quick and easy to change that blade, you're never going to change it and you won't get the best out of your bandsaw. So I want to change this now to do some really, really fine rip cuts. I've currently got a fine calibration blade on here. Let's change this and see how long it actually takes in the real world. Okay. Take off the fence. Lift the guard out of the way. Take out the plastic inserts, put it on one side. Take out the table, steady, whatever you want to call that. Obviously, I'm unplugged from the mains. Great, open the doors and release the tension on the blade. Drop off the blade guard. Loosen off the blade guides. Ease the belt off the top, off its guides out of this blade guard here. Use it through the slots in the table. Blade guard off. Fold the blade up. Unfold it. Check my teeth are correct, and they are. Drop it back into the table. Put it somewhere in the middle, make sure it's all looking good. Tensioning the belt a little bit. Track the blade. Test the blade tension. Recheck the tracking. Looks good, lock it down. Do the top one first of all. Moving this forward to about there. Bring in this, tighten down that one, good, come down to the bottom, and just get down inside here which is good, tighten that, tighten that, check the clearance, Let's drop back in, centre guard, drop back on the fence, Put in place the table brace and stop the clock. So that took me 10 minutes 38 seconds to change the blade and set it up. So I guess 10 minutes to change the blade on that is not too bad, and that's certainly something I could live with. And don't forget, I was still talking to the camera a little bit, um, but yeah, that's okay. And now we've got the blade in that we want here. So the next job is to actually put it through its paces. I've got a scrap of oak from a project cracking many, many years ago. It was actually my hand tool bench build. And what I want to do is just cut this down now into some thin veneers. It's pretty much four square already, but it's a bit battered and beaten up and that's okay. So we're just gonna take a thin slice off this and see how neat we can get this. Let's give it a go. Now I'm not gonna use any measurements. I'm purely gonna use this guide here, the window that we calibrated in the previous episode. And let's start off by trying to make a veneer of round about one centimeter, 10 millimeters, which is gonna be about there. And then we use a calipers to measure that to see how good it is. Bring the guard down so it's just above the cut for safety and also stability. So firstly, looking at the quality of the cut, it's really good. You could obviously see the saw marks in it, but then again, it is quite a wide, coarse blade. 
And look at that, it doesn't look too bad, does it? But let's measure it. We were aiming for 10 millimeters on the measuring gauge. Let's see what we ended up with. This is in the calipers. At this end, we've got 11.05. And at this end, we've got 11.08. So not the 10 we were looking for, but overall, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty good. It's consistent all the way down the length of the cut, and that's pretty important. So yeah, we're about a millimetre out or so from what the gauge was telling me, but that could simply be parallax error. But yeah, that's good enough for me. I'd be happy with that, to be honest with you. Dust collection is okay. You can see it's left dust here on the surface, in fact dust everywhere, and looking down on the floor I've got some dust collecting down at the bottom as well. So dust collection isn't superb, but it's okay. I will be cleaning the machine down at the end of a session, I think. Okay, my next check is, can I take this down even further? Can I take this down to a couple of 5mm boards? Looks pretty good. This one should be about five millimeters in theory. Let's see what that is. Uh, 5.8 at that end. And 5.9 at that end. So 0.1 millimeter variance. Yep, so plus or minus 0.2 of a millimeter. That's pretty much consistent as well. And again, you can see how nice that, that is. Let's see if we can get any finer. Let's come down to, I don't know, do you think two millimeters? One millimeter? <laughs> Let's try for two millimeters. That should be a good test. So with the original piece being quite thin, it struggled a little bit in the center there, but it still did an okay job. But I wouldn't really be taking veneers down in that way. I'd be slicing them off something like this. So let's give it a, a more reasonable challenge come down to one millimeter now which is going to be about there and see what we can do and there you go a veneer around about one millimeter you know so obviously this saw is going to do what we need it to do and it's going to do it pretty well you can see the dust, but we've done three cuts there, not huge cuts, and you can start to see the dust that's collecting on this thing. It is connected up to the air extractor as well, that's rated for more than this machine requires. So you can see you're not gonna get perfect dust collection here. And again, on this side, we've got quite a lot of dust collecting. Also, top of the fence, the back frame here is also covered in dust, and the floor is also covered in dust as well. So the dust collection is not superb, but it's okay. I can feel the dust in the air. I've not got a dust mask on, and I can feel the dust in the air. So any extended cutting with this, I'll be wearing a dust mask too, and then I'll be planning to clean down the machine at the end of a session. But in terms of the quality, that's not bad. What are we aiming for? We're aiming for one millimeter, 1.7 millimeters at that end, and I've got 2.2, oh no, 2.08 at this end. So 0.2 variance across the length. Now obviously that's relying on this gauge, obviously if it was that critical to me, I would use a measuring stick, probably my calipers, to give me an accurate measurement here. But that's going to be good enough for me, I don't really need to do much more than that, so happy, jobs are good. Now the next thing that this machine is supposed to be good at is cutting at an angle. So we're going to set this to 45. Again, we'll use our scrap piece of oak and we'll just see whether we can make a reasonable 45 degree cut on this stock. I don't actually have a 45 degree anything that's gonna allow me to get this perfectly accurate. So I'm just gonna come in with my set square just to give it every chance of success. And that's looking like 45 degrees round about there so we'll lock that down good thing about the fence it's flat on both sides so this is going to clamp quite nicely here on this side as well this means i should be able to line that up for a reasonable 
crack at a 45 degree cut. Okay, let's see how we get on with this. And that didn't struggle in any way, shape or form. So that's excellent. So that's worked pretty well. That's given me a nice consistent 45 degree cut. I'm not sure what I'd want to do that, but it's good to know that we can do it. And I think that the, the ability to put this fence on both sides of the blade is good. Excellent. Now the final thing you remember that I wanted to do on the bandsaw was some more organic type of shapes and I currently do in my workflow. So I'm gonna go change the blade back for my other blade um, and then we'll come back in and we'll see whether this can do some nice organic shapes or not. I'll see you in a second. Put the other blade back on. This is the Excalibur blade from Axminster, the one with the variable teeth inside it. This should be ideal for doing some more organic shapes. And all I'm going to do, let's make a shape. Let's do something like, I don't know, that. It's not beautiful, it's not pretty, but then again, I just want to see whether I can start to cut organic shapes on this and whether it does that job for me. Let's give that a go. It, um, it cut out organic shapes. Why you'd want this in your furniture, I do not know, but it shows that we can, we can do it. So excellent stuff. Again, a bit of dusty. But yeah, that did the job, and more importantly, it does the job that I bought it for. So this cost me somewhere around about £700 in the UK, and that was in 2020. It's a craft-rated bandsaw. It's not a professional bandsaw, so we need to bear that in mind. What we don't get on the bandsaw is a quick tension release, which can be useful for the rapid changing of the blades. But as we saw, it only takes about 10 minutes from decommissioning the blade all the way through to getting the thing calibrated ready for the next cut. We've seen it cut right down to a millimeter veneers and we've seen it cut out with a level of precision. It can do the 45 degree cuts, but actually multi-angles between zero to 45. I don't think it'd be much different on any other angle cuts. And it handled that incredibly well. It's got a good depth of cut. It's got about 200 millimeters of cut on this thing and it's got a nice solid stable table wasn't hard to set up took about two or three hours or so you were on that process with me it's reasonably stable in the workshop it is made mostly out of pressed steel but then again what do you want at that price point let's say the table is cast iron some things that aren't that good on this machine this blade guard here when you raise it up for that full 200 millimeter capacity has a habit of catching on that wheel and a few people have got in touch with that same complaint that on the 200 millimeters the blade guard catches on the wheel you can hear it and it's this piece here the front part of the blade guard that catches on the wheel I suppose you could cut this down but if you did that the back of the back of the blade is going to be exposed in normal use which is not something you want to do however I've noticed that problem only exists when I'm using this very, very narrow blade. And it's to do with the tracking of the wheel. When I had the wider blade on, the wheel tracked in a different position. It was further back than that guard and it didn't catch. So on the thicker blades, I can get that 200 millimeters of cut. On the narrower blade, to clear that wheel on the guard, you're gonna be down to around about 135 millimeters. But that's a narrow blade, and I'm not sure I'm going to be doing rip cuts um, with a narrower blade. That's why I got the wider blade. So it's annoying, but I'm not sure whether it's too much of a problem in, in use. And it's obviously a design feature. Now, the dust collection isn't really that good. And all I've done today is, what, three cuts, three veneer cuts, a 45-degree cut, and this gorgeous organic shape that we'll probably throw in the bin quite quickly. And I can feel the dust in the air. And I can feel my nasal passages just clogging up a little bit as you can, that headachey feeling coming on you sometimes get. So I'll be using this with a dust mask in use and I'll also be having the air cleaner on in the workshop just to take the dust out of the air. I'm not sure I'm a lover of these porcelain discs. They take a little bit of setting up, they're a little bit fiddly, uh, not hard, but a bit fiddly to set up. And when they rub on the blade, they do spark a little bit. Now obviously if you're slowing your cut down, you're not deforming the blade, it doesn't rub on that but they do spark a little bit. And over time, I can just see that causing some sort of problems. No idea what that problem would be, but anything that sparks things rubbing on it, 
can't be a good idea. So I would have liked to have seen for a few more pounds a bearing kit on this rather than these porcelain blocks. But you can get aftermarket fittings. I've not found any bearings for aftermarket fittings, but I've found upgrade of the porcelain block for a better quality material that reduces that sparking. And that might be worth doing. We might look at that in the future. Overall, would I recommend this machine? Yes. Early days, well, we just calibrated it and we've just done some of these test cuts. But it's accurate, it's doing what we need it to do, it'll give me those veneers, it'll give me some angle cuts, it'll give me the organic shapes I want in the furniture. So for me, in my workshop, small, compact bandsaw, great cut capacity, multitude of blades, nice width on those blades, yep, it's got a thumbs up from me. Hope you're finding this useful and I'll see you next time on The Woodcrafter. Crafter.